Thank you to our sponsor for curating this video. Welcome to ArtScore. If you want to review this painting with me, download our free guide. The link is below or in the bio. Now, let's talk about this painting. Today, let's take a look at some Japanese art. This painting, titled Mayoko, was by Japanese female watercolorist Tatsu Hirota in 1968. In the image, you see two women. One is a Mayoko and the other is a geisha. The Mayoko is a geisha's trainee. The Mayuko is the one with her head in submission. For having a clear point of interest, I score the subject a 9. I give the story an 8 because it's clear that the women are doing something together. What that is, I'm not entirely sure, so therefore, I can't give it a 9. But with the Miyoko's head in submission and the geisha's head up, it feels like the geisha is saying something quietly to her Miyoko. I believe the geisha is in the front because traditionally the Miyoko and the geisha were very similar but with critical differences. Miyoko meant the half jewel. She often was paid half the price of a geisha because she's a geisha in training. Typically, the geisha will have a white painted face and red lipstick on both top and bottom lips, which you can see in the first woman. Her Mayoko would have a white painted face as well, but only the bottom lip would be painted. And in the second woman, you can't tell if the top lip is painted or not, but you can tell the bottom lip is. Because the geisha is older and more mature, her kimono has fewer decorative patterns than the Mayoko. And in this case, in the painting, the Mayoko, the woman in the back, has far more decorative um, patterns on her kimono than the woman in the front. The geisha are specialized hostesses and entertainers who dedicate themselves to the art of conversation, song, poetry, and dance. I have always seen them as channels of cultural beauty and beacons, if you will, of appreciation. Let's take a look at the medium. I score the use of medium a 9. Tatsu used her watercolor, or perhaps gouache, in an extremely excellent and precise way. You can feel the meditative flow that comes from mastering your medium. medium. I scored color a 9 also. I love the soft palette of soft blues and red violets. The blue-green that comes through is peaceful. There's a very calming poetic feel to the use of color in this painting. And then to be surrounded in the heat of that background yellow orange is quite beautiful. The variety of cool colors in the geisha and the miyoko is calming. I give value an 8 in this painting. The reason why is because every object, like the hands, the kimono, the cummerbund, the hair, the flower, in her hair, every aspect of the painting has its own integrity. If you squint your eyes a little, everything still carries its own. With that said, the lights and the darks are very close, so you move through them very quietly and soft, which adds to the image. And that's extremely important in this painting. When we go into their space, we want to feel that quiet. So the values work very nicely to support that story. I give the style a six because I feel like I've seen this style before in other places. And so I can't say, yes, this is a unique voice and unique style only to this artist. And to be fair, I would have to look at more paintings of hers and compare them to other Japanese artists to get a better sense. But for now, I will stick with the score of a six. Looking at the structure of how things are aligned, constructed, and composed in this image, I give it an eight. The placement of the heads up in the top left hand corner, the vertical thrusts in the geisha, the space above and below the ladies work very, very well. Movement in this painting is quite beautiful. I'm primarily looking at the curve in the Mayoko's kimono. Do you notice how the curve goes up and over her shoulder? It moves towards the eyes of the geisha. There's also a dark spot behind the Mayoko that moves in that same direction. Her back wraps moving in that same pattern too. The curve for me is a traveling whisper. As if the geisha whispers to her Mayoko, I can feel the moving energy coming from her towards the Miyoko. What did she say? 
I don't know. I see the geisha's hands part and the Miyoko hands touching. So maybe she's telling the Miyoko to open her hands. Or she told her to fold her hands and we are now seeing the end result of her request. The Miyoko with folded hands. There is another beautiful curve behind the geisha that comes up the kimono and up her back. Then the movement moves into her neck and that's a very lovely curve as well. Shape, I give it a 9 because the two women pull away from the background very simply. The woman in the front pulls away from the woman in the back. Not in an extreme way, actually in a very subtle way because they're one. But the artist was sensitive enough to be able to separate the two as well. I give the edges an 8. Especially the space around and below the women, you can see how she crafted out those silhouettes. And though we're focusing on the positive shapes of the women, Tatsu took the time to craft all the negative profiles that sandwiched the figures. Very nicely done. I gave Soul an 8. The soul of this painting is what we feel beyond what we see visually. In this case, as our eye moves into the place of the geisha and the mayoko, the space that's there gets very quiet. That space becomes cool, calm, and very still. We feel somehow that whatever is in the geisha is being passed into the mayoko. The fact that we can feel that experience is the soul of the painting. The sense of soul is achieved in a picture when we manage the design elements to trigger a feeling or experience. And Tatsu did that really, really well in this image. Pattern gets a six. Now one might say there are patterns all over the kimono. Sure, there are. That's why the image gets a six. But outside of that literal pattern, I'm looking for a pattern within the art score framework that's primarily like a rhythmic design. For example, the arc in the curve over the Miyoko's shoulder and how it's uh, repeated in the geisha's shoulder and the kimono. That's the kind of rhythm or pattern we're looking for. That's a lovely pattern and it reinforces what's going on in the quote-unquote whisper. Outside of that curve, I'm not seeing or feeling the rep repeated pattern within the composition. And so that's why I'm keeping the score a little low. Harmony also gets a 6, primarily because there are a couple spots along the edges of the image that my eye gets stuck in. Right where the top right hand side, sorry, left hand side with the kimono and the Miyoko touch, my eye gets stuck in there. And then to get through that, to get into the kimono and then out of the kimono, it requires too much work, too much effort. And then when I do get to the bottom, I come across, which is nice, and then I come back up and then all of a sudden I get trapped in this gutter in this space on the right hand side of the image at the bottom of the kimono and it requires way too much effort to break out of that get into the kimono then break out of the kimono again and then get into the top of the image and then when we do get into the top now this image may possibly be cropped improperly but let's just pretend that it's not okay and it is the image then what happens is that if you come across the top of the image the Mayoko's head is way too close to the top and so it forces my eye to have to squeeze through that and that squeezing is discomfort it's not pleasing it's not not pleasurable and so I have to lower the score regarding harmony. Lastly, the signature is quite beautiful and very cool. It's in the bottom right hand corner but I'm giving it a 7. The value of the signature works well. My eye can pass over it pretty nicely but the signature itself is way too close to the edge of the image and so my eye can't pass around it, can't flow around it and, and because of that I can't give it an 8 or a 9 and so that's why in this case it gets a 7. So in the end, I gave this image 108 points out of a possible 126 points. That's 86%, which goes above the threshold for buying a painting. I always encourage people to buy something that's 85% or higher. That way, you know what you purchase is a quality work of art on its own. This painting is a fun image to explore and talk through. I thank you for coming on the journey with me. I'm Don Victor Vargas. Watch my videos to hear what it sounds like to really talk about art so you can too. If this video was educational and worth your time, please hit the like button. Remember, when it comes to art, your voice counts. And until next time, ciao.